Hello, welcome to White Baby Gardening and Worm Farm. Today we are going to be discussing what is your next plan for your, your next garden project. For many of us, the growing season will end pretty soon, while for others, they might have quite a few months remaining. So as the season nears its end, there is so much that needs to be done. And so please feel free to share what your next project is. For me, I have quite a few projects that are, that are lined up. Uh, hopefully I can get them done within September. At least that's the plan because there is a ton of other things that needs to be done for October. So the things that I'm going to be discussing today are the things that I hope to get done for this month. Just a minute, please. Hi, Han White. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're discussing what it is that, what is your next garden project? If you have more than one and you feel like sharing, please go ahead and do so. One of the purpose for this discussion is not just to talk about what we intend to do next in our garden, but it is to share what we are doing so that in case there are people who are new to gardening or even if we are seasoned gardeners sometimes something that another gardener say might give you an idea as to what can be done in your garden and i can also benefit from you guys and what you have planned in your garden hi her healthy home <laughs> nice of you to join us right so the whole idea of this discussion is to hi healthy Yes, it's to share ideas. That way we can be a source of help to other gardeners and they can be a source of help to us where our next garden project is. So if you have more than one project that you have lined up for the end of your growing season and you feel like sharing, then please do so. Yes, as I was saying before, I've got quite a few projects that I have lined up for September. It seems as if we are getting a little bit of an extension on our growing season. At least I'm hoping that it won't make any drastic changes. But based on what I'm seeing, it's not too bad. So with that in mind, some things that I'm trying to get done for September include my garden getting it started out. I still have most of my crop in the garden, actually. Yes, yeah, so I've only been doing a little bit of harvesting because this year everything is kind of slow, even though I started planting earlier than usual in terms of starting things indoors. But production has been pretty slow, so I still have most things to be harvested. Now, in the meantime, while I am waiting to harvest things, one of the things, one of the projects that I'm going to be working on hopefully by next week is to collect some compost from the compost depot and that I am going to be using in my main garden as soon as I've harvested the things that are in there. Now last year when I was adding compost to my garden for the main garden I didn't really had a lot of compost just the recommended amount which is two to three inches of compost so i know that this year it's going to definitely need some top up and then i had mostly plants that are heavy feeders growing in the main garden so definitely that's one of my projects as soon as i'm finished harvesting the stuff from it in the main garden 
it's going to get some compost. Let's see. And why it says, I'm planting my heart autumn garden. Oh, it's nice that you can still be planting at this time. <laughs> That's pretty nice, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to be collecting as much compost as I did last year because last year I went pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. But this year, my um, at the end of the growing season, this year, my raised beds won't be getting any compost because last year I had it far more than I actually needed. Yes, <clears throat> I said I'm going to be adding compost after I clear the beds. Okay, oh, sorry, I didn't see um, your comment or healthy home. When does your garden season end? My season usually ends sometimes about between August and mid-September. Sometimes we get a premature end because of early frost. So anytime from the end, from this month end until about early to the middle of September, it can end. There has been in the past, I think even in 2017, I was still harvesting things in October, but I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. So yes. So occasionally we get it extended to October, but it's usually in September that the growing season ends here. So yes, LP, I am adding compost to the main garden, but not to the raised beds. Um, I had too much compost to the raised bed last fall. And as you can see, when you look at my garden in the video, it looks really nice, green, and luscious. Initially, the first set of crops that I planted in the raised beds died because they had too much nutrients. But this time around, the second set of crop tend to be quite luscious. It has a lot of beautiful foliage. But what happens when you give your garden too much nitrogen and the plant doesn't know what to do with it. So all it will do is produce a lot of foliage, but then the production will be less. So if you're growing leafy vegetables, then fine, that's quite okay. But then when you're growing things like your peppers and tomatoes and other, um, other fruits, you don't want to have too much nitrogen. So that is a situation that I'm facing now where I've got lots of foliage, but the production is pretty low. So I won't be adding any compost to the raised beds after I've harvested it. Let's see. And why it says, just cool weather loving crops like beets, radish, cabbage, pak choy, and lettuce. Okay. Yeah. I tried that last year. Um, cool weather crop because it started cooling off. It usually starts cooling off here in August. This year is not that way, though, although it is cool enough now, which is the norm because it's the end of the month. But it started cooling off very early in August last year. So I thought, you know, I could start some cool weather crop. And so I started in the last week in July to sow some seeds, but they germinated, but they didn't do well because by the 8th of August last year, we got a really bad frost. So Practically everything in the garden died apart from my kale and the broccolis. So this year I won't be attempting the succession planting because there is just not enough time. Let's see. LP says, I'm taking note on how things went this season and going to start some greens and such that can be harvested sooner than later. Okay, nice, nice. That's one of my plans too, where the notes are concerned. Let's see, LP says, before winter, I'll set my hoop houses back up, hopefully with a lot of kale plants established enough to survive winter. Oh, nice. But that's good that you can actually even attempt to have kale growing over the winter. <laughs> yes, nothing of the sort can happen here unless you have a heated greenhouse. It will definitely all die off because... It's just too cold. Yes, so like I say, no compost for the raised beds this year. 
So one of the things, one of the next projects that I'm working on, I'm currently going through my garden and I'm looking at plants that I can see that they're not going to do much. Some of them I've harvested from, some of them didn't really produce anything. So as I go through the garden and I see these, the goal is to get rid of them because all they're just doing is taking up space in the garden and using up whatever nutrients can be left for next year's crop and also reducing the aeration between the plants. So I'm getting rid of those. And then another goal that I have for this month is to try and set up some, well, at least to calculate what it would cost to actually turn my entire garden into a poly polytunnel. So I would have several of them. So where I have a group of raised beds together, I'd create one polytunnel for that. And then from a main garden, I'd do a polytunnel for that. And then you get the idea. So I would like to calculate how much that is gonna cost. I know it's going to be super expensive. So the idea is just to do the calculations for now and to see if it is feasible. And it is something that I would like to get started on. I know I won't be able to afford to do all of it all at once, but then to just do it in stage so I can actually set up the framing because that is the most important thing at the moment to have the framing done. Let's see, LP says, last year I had two plants survive, but they didn't grow. Aww. I saw them late in fall. So I'm hoping that if I start with bigger plants, they'll do better. Or at least there will be more to harvest. Okay, good, good. Hopefully it works this time around. And White says, I'm starting out my herbs garden before it gets cold. Okay, good. LP says, whoa, that would be awesome. Would the tunnel stay up all year? The framing for the tunnel would stay up all year for a certainty. Um, the main idea, the main reason why I would consider putting up a poly tunnel is because of the amount of pests that I've had to deal with. And then to create covers for individual raised beds can be a bit cumbersome. It's easier, but then it can be a bit cumbersome to having to remove the cover every single time you need to access the plant or the garden. So for that reason, I'm thinking if I could do poly polytunnel over individual section, sex sections of the garden. <laughs> I can't even talk. <laughs> yeah, so that is the main idea. So what I want to do is create it in a way I have the framing, create the framing and have it set up where I can interchange the fabric that is used to cover it. So if I want to start my plants early, then I would put plastic over it as opposed to the polytunnel material. And then the plastic would act as a greenhouse and provide heat for the early plants. And then if, if it's just for pest control, then I would just use the polytunnel fabric. I'm still gonna have to research what is the best fabric to use for that. Okay, let's see. LP says, I need to get my herb situation figured out too, as I like to have some inside for the winter. Yes, that's a pretty good idea. Let's see, one of my hoop houses will have two layers of plastic. Only trouble is this blocks a lot of light. Okay, yeah. So will you set it up where um, it can be removed or is it just going to be staying in place permanently? Yes, because I know it will definitely block a lot of the light and I don't necessarily want to be blocking the light all the time. So if it is a situation where I can manage my pests, then naturally I would keep the covers off. But if not, then I would keep it covered. I do rather having my plants out in the open because they just perform a whole lot better, but pests can be so much of a challenge sometimes. 
Let's see. And White says, that sounds great, White Davy. I am going to make covers for all my bigger containers. Awesome. Let's see. Because I had a lot of trouble with pests this year. Yes. <laughs> we certainly suffered this year where those nasty little buggers are concerned. LP says, I built inch hoop house. So after I put the plastic on, I can lift the top by a handle. I follow instruction from James Prigioni. Okay. Um, the problem that I have for my small raised beds, it, it's quite easy to build um, a regular cover for it that I can just lift when I need to access the plants. But then some of my raised beds are like 16 feet long. So unless I'm going to be doing the covers in individual sections, then it's going to be a bit of an hassle <laughs> to, be, to access the garden if I have to be lifting a 16 foot long cover. And then the thing is, if I build the covers in section, I'm kind of concerned as to what will happen. Um, how do I seal it so that nothing can get into the section it might require more fabric to do that, more framing material and more fabric to do it that way. But we'll see. Yeah, so I'm still thinking about it, whether or not to just build cover for each sections and or to do it in a polytunnel fashion. So I'm going to be calculating both of them and see which one is more feasible. And then that's what I'm going to be going with. Yes, but whatever I'm going to be doing, it's not something that is going to be completed in a year because it's quite a bit of a garden here and it can be expensive. So I'll just, I'll just be doing it pretty much in stages. Let's see, and why it says, yes, healthy. Healthy says, they will be covered late fall to spring. And then I'll take the plastic off. The structure is still there if I want to add mesh rest of the year. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot to get this done, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, 16 feet is quite a bit to get to create a cover for. And most of them are in that region, 10 to 16 feet long. So can be cumbersome. And then they are three feet wide. I, see, I only have one raised bed that is two feet wide. All of the others are three feet. So it would be a pretty large cover. Yeah, so like you said, LP, one of the things you're doing is taking notes. So that is one of my goals. My next project for this, for the rest of this season too, is to create records of my successes and failures, the challenges that I faced in the garden. And then later on, after the growing season ends and the, sub, the winter is here, then I can spend some time to figure out what I can do differently or to make sure that it is a little bit better next year. I did that last year, but I still end up with a lot of problems. So I took an action to ensure that the pests that I had in 2020, I didn't have them this year, and I was successful in doing that. But then it seemed as if the other pests decided that, oh no, I'm not gonna let you escape. So this year I had quite a bit of new pests that I've never encountered before to deal with. So I'll be taking records of all the good and bad of my garden so that next year I'll stand a better chance. Yes, and definitely one of those things that's going to have to be on my record is to remember not to add too much compost <laughs> to my garden because it's not really worth it because 
now I'm here waiting for my harvest and I'm just getting small amount of production in comparison to previous years when I didn't have that much compost. Okay, so the next thing, the next project that I have that I am working on, I actually started on it already, is to harvest and prep my seeds for storage. So there are quite a few plants that I'm hoping to get seeds from. So far, I've harvested a few different types of lettuce seeds and my chrysanthemum seeds. So now I just have to dry them, process them, and put them into storage. But then I have other seeds that are just starting to come up, so I have to wait on them. I'm just hoping that at least the growing season will be a little bit longer so that I can at least get some seeds from my other plants. Let's see. Kelpie says, I let a lot of volunteer plants grow <clears throat> that I can think, that I think I shouldn't have. So I will need to remind myself of that next year and I want to save a lot of seeds this fall too. Nice. Her healthy home says, great. Thumbs up. I save more seeds this year myself. The only problem is it can it gets tedious yes that's true it gets tedious sorting out those seeds especially if it is like those lettuce seeds that there is so much that you have to do to get them sorted out but it is worth it especially if the harvest that you've had this year is a really nice one nice large nice tasting fruits or vegetables then you want to save your seeds and sometimes if you're growing a small garden, then it's, no, it's not really a bother to go and buy a few seeds. But then sometimes, based on the seed packages, you might get just a small amount of seeds in a package and you have to be buying lots of packages. It can be a challenge and it can get pretty expensive. So, yeah, saving your seeds is definitely worth, worth the effort. Let's see. And White says, I have a few seeds that I am waiting on to. Okay, good. What do you do to get rid of the debris? You mean the debris on the seeds? Yes, that one can be a bit tricky. And sometimes it's difficult to get rid of all of the debris, but you might be able to get rid of most of them. So for one... I haven't started out my seeds yet. I just collected them. But last year, I collected um, lettuce, not lettuce, um, carrot seeds. And what other seed was that? Pak choy. And for the carrots, the debris is extensive. So I would put it on a container, allow it to dry on an open, something flat surface. And allow it to dry and then I would use a fan to just gently blow the debris away because the debris tends to be a bit lighter than the seeds and so, and I also sift the seeds because some of the debris is fine enough that it can actually go through this sift without the seeds falling through yes and sometimes I do a combination of both but if you're going to use a fan you want to make sure that it is on a low speed and you want to make sure that you keep it a good distance from, from, the, um, from the seeds because you don't want it to blow everything away. So it can be tedious. This year is the first year I'm harvesting lettuce seeds though. And that one seemed to be, seem as if it's going to be tricky. So we'll see how that one goes. <laughs> yeah, it can be tricky. Let's see. And White says, I'm saving beet seeds, but I'm taking a but it's taking a long time to dry. Can't you just wash the seeds? I would not encourage washing your seeds because one that can encourage mold or fungus to grow on your seeds. 
and it may encourage your seeds to germinate before you're ready for them. So I would not recommend washing seeds. I don't know if anyone actually washed seeds. I've never looked into that, but these are some problems that can occur if you wash your seeds. It will, it can germinate early or it can encourage mold on your seeds. So it's, it's going to take a while for the seeds to dry fully, but at the same time, waiting is going to be worth the effort, especially as long as you have the space where you can spread the seeds and they won't be getting in your way. Let's see. LP says, how do you store your self-harvested seeds? Um, once I get my seeds dry, I just store them the same way that I would store any other seeds. I just get a paper bag or make a paper envelope and put them in there and seal them. And then I just put them in a container with all my seeds and cover them. That's all I do. And I make sure that I don't keep it somewhere where they are exposed to moisture. I try to keep them as dry as possible. see lp says that's nice and white it'll be um your elder home says okay thanks you're welcome my dear she says and white says won't that work if your seeds are not dry i don't really know but the possibility is there that it can encourage that it can um, encourage the mold and the fungus to grow on the seeds. So uh, I would be afraid to try it. But then if you have a lot of seeds, you can try it on a few and see what works, but you don't want to try it on all of them. But you could try washing a few of them and see if that helps. Let's see. Uh, her healthy home says she's collecting dry seeds from herbs. Yes, that one I have to do yet. Uh, my Italian basil is actually seeding up. So I need to collect some seeds from that. And I have my mint that is producing seeds as well. So I may collect seeds from those. Well, that depends because I'm going to be going through the seeds that I have from this year that I did not plant and see if I need to be saving any of the seeds because if I have seeds already, then I wouldn't. Hmm, maybe I should still save the seeds so that I can have it for next year. Yeah, yeah, depending on how much seeds I have. But yes, I have quite uh, my mint and my Italian basil that is producing seeds at the moment. My, um, my spinach that bolted quite early they are seeding up as well, so I've got quite a bit of harvesting to do. I'm not sure how to harvest the spinach seeds because they seem to just be in a little clusters. I'm not sure what to do with them yet, but I'll figure it out. Let's see. Her Healthy Home says, washing works for things like pumpkin seeds, yes to get the residue and slime off. Yes, um, definitely for those, your cucumbers and those large seeds, it definitely work. But for these tiny little ones, it I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But you can research and see if there are others who would wash these seeds and see if they do, what method they take to ensure that it dries quickly. I imagine you'd have to get it underneath a fan and get it on some reasonable just a little bit of heat not too much that is going to destroy your seeds but yes i'd be afraid to try putting it washing those small seeds and white says that's what i thought we're healthy home okay um her healthy home says something and white doesn't know Sorry, something white David doesn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. Oh my goodness, I only know a few things. I only know a few things. I keep trying to learn more. Yes, I keep trying to learn more, but 
I don't think I'll ever be able to know everything there is to know, not even if I get to live for eternity. <laughs> See, I have never collected mine seeds, or is that mint? Show us if you do. Okay. Okay. Yes, if I do, I will I will definitely show it. Let's see, her healthy home says, I saw this method where you let the seeds fall into a container and the wind blows the shaft. Yes, that that one is pretty much very effective. I just love those plants though that you can just harvest the seeds and you don't have anything to worry about you just shake the plants and the seeds fall off and they come in nice size pods so that it's not really difficult for you to separate them from the pods but nothing is always easy so <laughs> yes yes yeah, so another one of my projects for this month is oh hi pit stop how are you yes another one of my projects for this month is actually to get my seedling trays and flower pots cleaned yeah so i don't really have the time to wash them and scrub them at the moment so i'm thinking i'm just going to empty them and i've emptied most of them already but i still have a few more to go so I'm just going to get a large container and put them in bleach water and just let them soak for a while, rinse them out. And then eventually, if over the winter, I can find the time to wash them, dry them and put them back into storage. But for now, I'm just going to soak them in bleach water, get rid of most of the dirt and make sure I'm killing the bacteria. But I'm going to have to be careful not to have it in the bleach water for long because that too can go stagnant and create more bacteria in there. So that is one of my goals. Yes. So and then for the potting soil that I'm going to be throwing out of these seedling trays, those I'm not going to discard. I'm going to be sterilizing them. Let's see. Her healthy home is saying hi to Tina. And Han White says, I'm saving carrot seeds for the first time. Okay, good. I tried to, I am, um, what is that, regrow beets this year to see if it would produce seeds because it is also one of those biennial crops. Um, unfortunately, did not produce any seeds. In fact, none of my beets did well. I only have that one plant that I tried to regrow the beets. Everything else germinated and nothing made it pass an inch. So there you have it. But I'm still going to keep that um, one beet that I have. I'm going to put it indoors, overwinter it, and see if maybe... maybe it will still produce some seeds oh um and why it says yes because of your finger yes um because of my finger i cannot wash the containers just yet hi vermicompost learn by doing how are you Let's see, my basil reseed itself, but the lettuce seeds, I never know when to harvest them before they disperse in the wind and spread where I don't want it. Okay, yes. Um, it's a good idea to harvest it just when you see it start sending out those little fuzzy, <laughs> those little fuzzy things like you would see on the... What's that weed called? Dandelion. Yeah, so just when you see it start producing those little fuzzy things, then that is the best time to actually harvest them.
let's see, and why it says, mine produced seeds, the ones I was regrowing. Oh, nice. Yes, mine seemed to be a bit lazy. <laughs> Hi, Melanie. Okay, our healthy home says, Hi, Melanie, that's my daughter's name. Oh, yes, Melanie and Daniel. <laughs> Vermicompost says, hello, new to the chat. Welcome, Vermicompost. It's nice to have you with us. Okay, everyone is just saying greetings. Okay, you're doing awesome, thanks. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, so that is the next the next project as well to get those potting soils sterilized. I actually started doing that a few months ago, but I have quite a few of them because I only do like five gallons at a time. Oh, Samuel, not Daniel. <laughs> yes, I yes, because I knew it was a Bible name. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to be getting my potting mix sterilized. I'm going to be using hot water because of the pest problem that I had last year. Um, well, not last year, but in spring. So I'm going to be using hot water to sterilize the soil. And of course, doing so is going to be destroying a lot of the beneficial life forms that are in it. So I will just have to revitalize it with some finished compost and castings. Hopefully that will be good enough to replace the beneficial life forms that will be in it. But in order to destroy the whatever might remain from these pests, then I'm going to be using hot water. Of course, you can always use hydrogen peroxide to sterilize the soil, but then I don't know to what extent it will destroy whatever pathogens, how much pathogens and... Um, eggs and stuff like that that might be left over from pests i don't know to what extent the hydrogen peroxide would destroy those so the main idea is to make sure that i get i kill those eggs if there's any in there so that is why i'm going to be using the hot water let's see and why i can see in height to vermicompost okay Um, Pit Stop says the pest ruined her summer garden. Yes, they were, it seemed they were on a rampage this year, mostly because it is so hot, the artist year on, in recorded history. So I don't know if it is the heat, why so many pests decide to come out. A lot of pests that some of us have heard of, but I've never really had to deal with before, but Quite a few people's garden got destroyed by it. Mine almost got fully destroyed by it. Thankfully, I had the worm casting, so that kind of helped to strengthen the plant to fight back. But yes, the pests were pretty terrible this year. Yes, I'm really sorry that it ruined your garden, Pizza. And, and why it says hers too got destroyed by them. And between the pest and the drought that we are having, oh my goodness, I've never used so much water to water my plants ever. But I guess that's all a part of life, eh? Let's see. Okay, so Vermicompost says, Hi, Han White. It's good to be in a helpful garden chat. Okay, that's the purpose of the chat so that we can learn from each other, <clears throat> sorry, and help each other with their gardening. If it stops, then, oh no, Han. Yes, it's quite terrible, those pests. Hopefully next year will be better. But the thing is, it seems as if when you prepare for one type of pest, other types of pest will find you. So we just always have to keep learning and trying to adjust and to deal with those pests as soon as they come. One advice that I keep repeating on the live is that when you see creatures and you don't know what they are, 
We don't want to be destroying the ones that are beneficial, but it is good to start doing research on them. If you don't know what they are, uh, take pictures, put it on whatever social media you can find. Ask around what it is, because if you delay, then you could end up with an outbreak of pests that you cannot get under control once it has gone bad. So again, it is a good idea. Once you start seeing insects or any abnormalities on your plants that you're not used to, do research as quickly as possible to find out what it is, because the sooner you act, the sooner you can get things under control. Let's see. Her Healthy Home says, I had so many arm armworms this year. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry you had to endure that. Yes, I think my two biggest pests this year was the leaf uppers and the um, leaf uppers and which other one? The, the cutworms. And then for the leaf hoppers, because they spread the curly top virus, then it just makes everything terrible because I didn't even know I um I didn't even know I saw the leaf miner, the leaf miner flies, and I saw the leaf hopper, but I didn't see any damage for a little while. So I was watching it because I didn't know if it was a beneficial insect, yes or no, and I didn't want to destroy it and then find out it was beneficial. So because I delayed, then I end up with the curly top virus spreading to pretty much all of my plants. So that is why I'm encouraging you guys to make sure that you do research when you come across insects and creatures in your garden that you do not know. Let's see, Vermicompost says, glad to know it's not just me with the pest. Squash bugs got in my garden bad, but my worm casting kept the aphids way down. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about the squash bugs, but at least the worm casting was able to help you get some things under control. And White says, I was teaching for face to face for seven weeks, so I didn't have time to check the plants as I normally do. I had aphids and white flies. Yeah, um, it is it is a challenge keeping up with our day-to-day -day activity and still monitor the garden. It can be pretty tricky, yes, and especially if you have to work away from home because when you're home, if you're on your lunch break or a coffee break or you want to take a five, you can always just run through the garden and monitor a portion of it. But when you have to work around away from home, it is even more of a challenge and sometimes you are at home but it still is challenging because you might have kids to deal with or whatever the task is you just have so much to do that it can be tricky but sometimes where possible if it is even just five minutes and to monitor even just a section of your garden it is well worth it because then you can see what's going on yes um this year i had potato, the Colorado potato bugs for the first time. I didn't even know what they were when I first saw them. I saw, I just saw that one of my potato leaves was being eaten. So I started searching on the leaves to see what it was. Didn't find anything to us. So I started searching the root of the plant, saw this bug. I didn't know if it was good or bad. So I put it in a container and gave it some leaves just in case it is something beneficial but then i started asking around and learned that it was the potato bug so i destroyed it and every day i go out and monitor until i was able to find all the bugs that were there i found their clusters of eggs and destroyed and within a few weeks i didn't have any problems with them after that because i was able to get it under control only because each day i go out and monitor it so it's a good idea as long as it is possible to go out and monitor your garden as much as possible. Let's see. And White says, I had aphids and white flies. Okay. And her healthy home says, I try to identify first, but if it stays getting away, I might panic and take it out just in case. Yes, I know the feeling. <laughs> yes, I know the feeling. Um, her healthy home. Pit stop says it was trips for me. Oh, 
Yeah, those little buggers. And then the sad thing is that these pests, when you spot them very early, it's not too difficult to get them under control. But when, if that, if you don't spot them on time, it, they can get so out of control. And then for some of them, there are certain treatments that just doesn't work because over time, they get used to it. And so that is why I keep encouraging people. If you have a pest issue and say, for example, you use a particular type of pest control this time around. Don't use the same thing the next time around. Try to use something else. Rotate what you're using to control the pest because they do adapt to it. And once they adapt, then there's not much that you can do. So it's a good idea to rotate whatever type of pesticides, organic or otherwise, homemade or otherwise, that you're using so that they don't have the chance to get too accustomed to it. Let's see, and why it says leaf miners, leaf hoppers, and caterpillars. Yes, I had those two. My Chinese cabbage, I harvested from them once. And I have three really nice sized Chinese cabbage, but it just looked like a really bad sift. <laughs> it doesn't look like Chinese cabbage at all. So yes, the caterpillars really did a number on it. But now I'm trying to see if they will continue growing so that I can get the seeds from it because the packages when you buy seeds just have about 12 seeds in there. And sometimes not all the seeds will germinate. So I'm hoping that they will produce seeds for me this time around. Let's see, Her Healthy Home says, I think I know what most beneficial bugs look like. Okay, well, that's nice. That's good. Let's see, and why it says, Pit Stop, I've never seen thrips, and I only knew about them after watching your video. Okay. And White says, I started killing everything that moves. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of it's kinda easy to panic when creatures are destroying the garden because you plant it because you want to have it. You want to be there caring for it. You want to be there watching it grow. And more importantly, you want to be able to harvest it. You don't want to spend all that time caring for it and then some terrible creature just come and take it all away from you. So it's easy to panic. <laughs> <laughs> and get rid of yes <laughs> her healthy home says what are the beneficial I think she left out insects that you know of assassin bugs praying mantis predator wasp ladybug lace wings spiders anything else I have lizards too. They scare me, but they're helpful. Oh, <laughs> I'm thankful I'm not in Jamaica once you mentioned the lizard because I don't like those things. And then we had a lot, we have a lot of croaking lizards there and we have a lot of geckos and those geckos can grow really big and I hate them and I ate the croaking lizards and then there are two different types of croaking lizard. There is one that has a very soft body and it tends to be fat and pinkish in color. And it loves to come into your house at night and stay on the walls and just croak away. They're just so annoying and their flesh feels creepy. And then you have the ones that love to be outdoors and they stay on the trees and they change their color to fit into their environment. So you can actually go and hold on to the tree and hold on to one of them without knowing. And those croaking lizards, if they're thirsty and the time is hot, they can actually, I've heard of situations where they attack people and actually try to drink their blood in order to cool themselves down. So I'm afraid of them. <laughs> so when I pass any trees and I see one on it for weeks, I will not walk in that direction. <laughs> Yes, and then the croaking lizards, they have this little saw 
in their box that you don't see it, but then when they are agitated, they will just raise this saw that they have that goes the full length of their back down to their tails. And it's just scary. So <laughs> when I see them, I don't go in that region for a pretty long time. And those geckos we had, we call them green lizards in Jamaica. We had a lot of them in one portion of our yards because we had a huge rock, maybe the size of two upstairs boxes. And we had trees close to it and the rock, the geckos live in it. Oh, I don't even like thinking about it. That was just, I love climbing on the rock. It was fun, but those geckos really scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Yeah, so I wouldn't want to have the lizards around. I don't care how good they are at pest control, no. <laughs> yes, um, I know the lizards are very good at um, wasp too. They are parasitic wasp that um, are beneficial for your garden. They will feed on quite a few different types of pests. So... Yes, but pretty much you've mentioned most of the popular types of um, beneficial bugs that are common. There are other types of beneficial bugs, but I don't know. I don't know, really know them, never seen them. Yes, but these that you mentioned, her healthy homes, these are the most popular. But then, because there can be others that I don't know of, so I try not to destroy until I'm sure what they are and then there are just other insects that are pollinators really so they're not really going to harm your plants and they're not going to be feeding on pests in your garden either but that is where the problem comes in because if they are just insects going about doing their daily business i don't want to be destroying them if i don't have to let's see pit stop says they are horrible, hand. <laughs> yes, I imagine those trips would be. Um, and why it says, which is sad because I'm not like that. Yeah, I know it must bug you, bug you when you have to be wiping out all those insects, but to be on the safe side where your plants are concerned. See, Melanie says, I do that every day, especially if I see holes in the leaves or poo. Yes, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Your healthy home says the bugs bring the, the worst out of all of us. And why it says the leaf uppers destroyed my herbs box. Yeah, um... Quite a few of my plants because um, I was going to be overwintering my scotch bonnet peppers and my herbs. And the only thing out of my herbs that I am going to be overwintering because I don't see any of the curly top virus on them is my um, rosemary and my lavender. But all my other herbs show signs of the curly top virus or they have been damaged by pests so I won't be overwintering most of them unfortunately because I planted a lot of the herbs this year with the intent to overwinter but I guess that's that you win some and you lose some that's just life let's see and why it says her healthy home I don't think I had any beneficial bugs huh? I didn't see a lot of um yeah, this year was this year was terrible for me where beneficial insects are concerned because the ladybugs, I usually have lots of those. Lace wings, I know they are in the area, but I've never seen them in my garden ever. Not just this year, but I've never seen them in my garden. But a block from me at my niece's house, I see quite a lot of them. But then she has a lot of flowers, so maybe that is why she has them. I don't have a lot of flowers. So the lace wings, um, although they're close, I've never seen them in my garden. The ladybugs this year, I think I saw maybe four. And usually there would be tons of them. So another insect, other beneficial insects I don't see. I saw one parasitic wasp and that was it. That was it for beneficial insects. That's all I saw. Three ladybugs and one parasitic um, wasp. 
for the entire year. So I don't know what's going on because I don't use harmful chemicals in my garden. So I know that I am not doing anything to, or at least I'm not doing much to affect them. But um, I don't know if maybe neighbors are using harmful pesticides and stuff like that that is causing them not to be here. I don't know. But I didn't see much of them this year. It's it's really sad. Let's see. Melanie says, the only thing I don't kill is the ladybugs. <laughs> Uh, her healthy home says, wow. And why it says, I know ladybugs, ladybirds, and so, and those I don't kill, and I do think they are pretty. Oh, yes, and I have birds. Birds are also beneficial in the garden. I had lots of those this year. In fact, I have more than I wanted because I had the regular birds that always come around, but this year, the magpies, they just took over, but they were so annoying. They destroyed a lot of my berries and fruits. But yes, um, the beneficial insects are lacking this year. I don't know if maybe it's too hot for them. That would be a part of it too. Maybe the heat was just too much for them. Let's see. And white says, no, not on white. Her healthy mom says, I also usually don't kill ants. I do not I do not kill unless I have to as well. Yes, that's a pretty good practice because life is very precious irrespective of what it is. So if we don't have to kill them, we shouldn't. Yeah, it would be nice if we could actually get these beneficial insects, not the beneficial, these pests under control without having to destroy them really but that's not an option so we have to ensure that we keep living so we'll keep destroying them unfortunately let's see melanie says i have a set of black eyes peas and it and it's covered with hundred of wasps ladybugs okay that's nice. Hey, Melanie, do you have access to copies? And can you send me some of those black eye peas if possible? Because I've been searching for copies and black eye peas to grow, but it's difficult to find them, especially the copies. Let's see here. Healthy Home says, I had a lot of predator wasp. Nice which isn't good with children in the garden and you spiders, that looks scary. Um, for the most part, predator wasp do not sting. Yes, for the most part, there are a few of them that will sting, but for the most part, uh, most of them do not sting. So you don't have to worry about them. You just research the type that you have and whether or not they sting, but for the most part, they don't. see her healthy home says i usually have praying mantis but not this year i don't know i don't know i think the heat must have something to do with all those beneficial insects not being around this time around last year i had lots of pollinators um in the garden i didn't have a lot of bees last year this year i had pretty much i didn't i don't think i saw a dozen bees this year I saw a few bumblebees occasionally, that's it. And wasp, I have a lot of them last year. And this year, I see a few of them. Pollinators this year were pretty scarce. Yes, so I attempted to grow some flowers because last year I didn't see the bees. So I thought, okay, I need to invite them back. So I attempted to grow some flowers this year, but I failed. <laughs> just a few of them germinated and they took forever to flower so yeah but i'll try again next year with that we'll see how that goes and why it says i'm overwintering my herbs and peppers the herbs will be outside okay good it's nice that you can actually keep your plants outside well some of your plants outside 
for the winter. I'd be ecstatic if I could. <laughs> LP says, I have experienced pest pressure this year. However, I've seen a lot of wasp and hornet hunting in my plants. I have a lot of weeds, vegetation in my yard. Very overgrown as well as wood logs. Okay. Okay. Uh, Realty Mom says, I've never seen a bird eat any of the bad worms from my plants. Yeah, maybe they could be eating it, but you don't know. But then those worms are so good at hiding too. Because Mark, you even us, we have to be searching to find them. Unless um, they are there in abundance, then it's easy to find. But even for us, we have to be searching to find them. So maybe it's kind of difficult for the birds to find them as well. Melanie says, I did not have any ladybugs early. But suddenly, I have a lot. Okay. Well, that's good. At least they are showing up now, so you know that they are around. Let's see. LP says, I don't want to be this crazy, but I am under the impression that this has aided the population of insects, including beneficial. Okay. Over my compost says, I have black ants that eats the early flower part of my loofah plant. So production is way down with them this year. I do notice that the ants this year tend to be all over the plants. And I don't see what they're eating. So I figure they're taking the sap from the plants because it's not as if I see any little insects or anything of the sort that they are preying on. And I don't see aphids because I know that the ants like to work hand in hand with the aphids and i didn't have any aphids issue but the ants were there and even at my niece's house a block away her flowers her peonies got decimated by the ants so i do know that the ants can be a pest in the garden too so yeah but usually for the ants i, I don't really do much unless there is a large population of them, but for some reason, I don't tend to have a lot of ants in my garden. They tend more to want to be in my worm bin where they can take the food from the worm bin to their colony, but I haven't really had an issue with them in my worm bin either for a year, a little over two years, so that's pretty good. LP says, that said, I've seen a ladybug on tomatoes I know had aphids. Then I promptly found the ironworms I was looking for. I have squash borers, cabbage loopers, and cabbage moth, to name a few. Yes, it seemed as if they all, all came out to give you a visit. Okay, your kids are scared of them. Okay, that's good to know. My daughter is scared of moths too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My son is afraid of the wasp. And we tell them when you see them, if they're on you, don't try to hit them or anything. Just be still and let them go away. Hopefully that works. So he saw one on him yesterday and he stood still, but he was just crying like crazy. <laughs> Yeah, they can be scary because you don't know what they're going to do. Getting stung by a wasp is not nice at all. Her healthy mom says, oh, it's hard to treat, but it's hard to treat. Put plant flowers without affecting bees. So you use anything? I'm um, afraid I don't understand that question. It's hard to treat. I don't know if put is what you wanted to say there. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't understand that question. Um, a healthy home. 
LP says, I have a lot of flowers this year. So many bees. Oh, send some of them my way, can you? <laughs> Definitely recommended growing more. Next year, I will grow more. Yes, I'm definitely trying to inculcate more flowers in my garden because I usually say, oh, my garden is too small. I don't really have space for flowers, but then they are going to be attracting a lot of the pollinators. So now I'm trying to make a little space here and there for them. Hopefully that will work. Melanie says, I don't know where to get cow peas, but I will be drying some of the black eye peas and will send you some. The chocolate mint is starting to flower, so I will send you some of those seeds too. Oh, awesome. I'm going to be looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. No, I just need to find where I can source the pineapple mint seeds. It would be interesting. I really want to know what that pineapple mint tastes like. Um, our healthy home says, I guess I should cut the birds some slots. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yes, weeds do attract bugs. Some like places to hide. Yes, um, that is so true. Trying to keep the weeds down is a good way of keeping, keeping the bugs out but then like you said lp there are the good ones and the bad ones so if you get rid of all of the weeds you'd be taking away the home for both good and bad it's hard to know where to draw the line because you want to have the good and you want to get rid of the bad but whatever you do to some, to some extent you're going to be affecting the good ones but you know hopefully we can find some way to bridge the gap And why it says, yes, I had ants all over my black current. Okay. I had a lot of bees as well, as always. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are some people that say they have a lot of bees, but um, I don't know what happened. I tried to raise bees in, what's that, 2017? Yeah, around 2017. 17, 2016, 2017, I tried to raise bees, I ordered bees, and I was waiting, I had to wait a few months for the order to be processed, and then just at the time when I was supposed to collect my bees, they told me, okay, your order is ready, come and pick up, and then they called back, no, you can't pick up the bees, they're not ready, then there's two weeks later, they say, okay, um, I'm sorry, there will not be any bees, and all bee orders for bees got cancelled so i don't know what happened because for whatever reason they chose not to say what happened but since then i haven't been seeing a lot of bees around and each year i'm seeing less and less of them so i don't know i don't know what the story is what happened if they had disease or what happened to them but yes the bee population in my region seem to be done but then sometimes i talk to others in my region and they would say they had quite a lot of bees i don't know if it is the only bee or if it is the bumblebee or some other bee but i'm not seeing as much as i used to so i'm kind of concerned about that i haven't tried purchasing any since then so i don't know Her healthy home says oh wow Will you try again? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried since then. There was a daycare next door to me so because there are so many kids. I didn't bother to try again, but um, the daycare closed this year. So maybe, maybe I will try again. But if I'm going to do that, I will have to keep into consideration where I'm going to be keeping them over the winter now that I have turned my garage into my worm farm. And I don't think I want to be in there with the bees flying around. And my shed is not heated, so I don't know if I don't think I can keep the bees in there. So I don't know. Um, I'm still looking into it because I bought all the supplies. But 
I'm still looking to it because it is something I'm very much interested in. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it while I'm living here, but definitely it is something that I would like to do in the future. LP is asking on white, how are you growing herbs outside? Melanie says, the only flowers I planted is giant marigold all over the backyard. Okay, nice. You know, I planted marigolds. They are mm, about two to three feet tall. And I planted them pretty early in the growing season. And it is only the last two days that they actually start flowering. So I'm thinking if if that is how long they're going to take the flower, I don't know if the heat has anything to do with it, if the drought has anything to do with it, or if the curly top virus had anything to do with it, because I know that the curly top virus stunt plants. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but if this is how long it's going to be taken to flowering, then... I might as well just buy the store-bought ones because those ones are already either flowering or close to flowering. So I don't know if I'm going to be growing them. Maybe I should try a few next year just to figure out if that is what was happening or if it is natural for it to take this long to actually produce flowers. Um. Let's see. LP says, before any of my flowers started blooming, I had weeds blooming in the yard. So I'm thinking it's key that there's always some kind of flowers available. Some wasps are pollinators too. Yes, um, I did see that in a research. Um, so yes, yeah, so you're right. LP. So one of the things that I am thinking of doing, that, oh, I need to jot that down. What was it that I need to jot down? Yes, I need to get myself some flower seeds over the fall. And the company that I buy flower seeds from, <clears throat> they close down pretty early in the season. So I think it's about time for me to get my fall seeds. So what I'm going to be doing is getting seeds for different flowers. So I'm going to be researching researching types of flowers that blooms different times throughout the year. Need to write that down too. Yeah, so I need to, oh, that hurts. I need to research flowers that blooms different time of year so that I can extend the time that I have. The time that, um, so I can know when to plant them and ensure that I always have flowers blooming right throughout the growing season because that is going to attract me some pollinators. And why it says, I won't be planting a lot of things next year, only a few, apart from the herbs. I will only plant beets, carrots, radish, turnips, tomato, kale, callaloo, sweets, and aubergine. Okay. Yes, the more things you plant, the more pests you'll have because different pests are attracted to different types of plants. So, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. So, planting less actually help you control the amount of pests you have. But then, and then sometimes our garden, we tend to overcrowd them, which can be a challenge. And white say, no, LP says, and white, that's a nice selection of crop. 
I bought petunias from the store early on and they are still in bloom. Nice. That helped me to have flowers in the garden right away as well as the weeds. Okay, well, that's pretty good. And why it says LP, I did it last year and have a few videos on them. I was supposed to grow them inside, but that didn't happen. They did great outside. LP says, sorry, my phone has already bad service, so I keep falling out of the actual live stream. Hush, my dear. I will have to check that out, possibly again. Hi, Bo Adventure. <laughs> Do a small garden in Thailand. Okay, you, you have a small garden in Thailand. Nice. And wife says he has a playlist for those for that her for her garden. Okay, Melanie says I forgot to sunflower. Just when I was thinking of harvesting the seeds, squirrel got to them first. Those squirrels. I buy wildflower seeds, but did not plant them. I bought wildflower seeds and I sow all of them. I had about four packs. And I think I had maybe five plants came up out of the four packs of seeds. <laughs> it's crazy because I was so looking forward to it because they were just looking so beautiful on the sashi and like, oh yes, I'd like to have these. Only five plants came up. So it was a bit of a disappointment for me where that is concerned. But I think I'm going to try again next year with these wild flower seeds. Bo says, my garden has sunflowers and marigolds are blooming now. Okay, that's nice. Lovely. <laughs> B says, yes, I have sunflower and marigold in blooms now as well in Michigan. Okay. The bees love them so, so much. I've never planted sunflower. Year before last, I had quite a few, I had tons of sunflowers growing in my yard and I've never planted it. I've never planted any. There were so many of them in my garden last year that was that there was hardly any space for me to plant in my main garden. I had to be going around and pulling them like crazy. But then across the street from me, a neighbor of mine, she grows sunflowers. And I think maybe the birds dropped the seeds in my yard or something to that effect so i ended up with that then last year i ended up with one sunflower in one of my raised beds and i just let it stay there but um i didn't harvest any of the seeds and surprisingly nothing no sunflower grew this year <laughs> let's see and why it says my marigold that i purchased are still blooming nice pieces i planted a seed mix and then didn't know what exactly was what i planted and what was weed oh, okay so what did you do did you pull up the plants because you don't know what's weed and what flowers or did you just decide to let everything stay Bo adventure says that's great when the flowers we had planted when we started when they we have planted then they started to bloom okay yes and i think another goal for me this um another project for me is that pretty soon a lot of the garden centers are going to be going on sales um with garden supplies so I'm keeping a lookout for that because I want to go and get some of the supplies that are going to be there pretty cheap or cheaper, not pretty cheap because they don't really sell them very cheap, but at least they're going to be cheaper. So I'm going to try to get my garden supply now as opposed to getting them in the spring when they're going to be more expensive. Yes. So for now, 
the weather seemed to be doing pretty good in my region. And when I say pretty good, it's not getting too cold just yet. So the plan seemed to be okay with that. I'm hoping that we are really going to have a bit of an extension on the season. We can get snow as early as September. So as soon as my garden pots are harvested, I'm going to be covering them because I don't want the snow to fall. And then as the weather fluctuates between hot and cold and then it start, the snow starts to melt, then that can freeze the flower pots. So I don't want that to happen. So every year I cover them as soon as I've harvested everything from it. So that is one of the projects that I'm going to be working on, making sure that I get them all covered so that I can have them a bit longer. Anyway, I'm going to be ending the live pretty soon. So I'm just waiting to see if there are any other comments. Let's see. Bo Adventure says, and White, I will check your channel. Okay. Do you do videos on um, Bo Adventure? Oh, Melanie, you can still plant in September. That's awesome. That's wonderful. I like that. <laughs> I probably need to move out to where you are. <laughs> So when you plant in September, what type of things would you be planting in September and um, how long before you can harvest? See, Han White is thanking Bo Adventure. Okay. Yeah. How long before you can harvest? That would be so nice if I could still plant in September. In fact, you know, even if I couldn't plant in September, if I could have the growing season just until the end of september or october i would be so happy because there are so many things other types of crop that i could actually grow but it is what it is so we just have to work with it and see vermicompo says thanks for the chat i learned a lot okay you're very welcome you're very welcome Yes, it is nice starting with you guys because there's always so much that we can learn from each other. It's always fun. Yeah, so I'm going to be getting myself something to eat now. I haven't had supper yet. It was ready just that in time for the live to start. And White says, great live. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Han White. Yes, I do. I did enjoy it. So thank you guys for sharing all your experiences with, with me. Let's see. Melanie says she can grow just bok choy, beets, and kale. Okay, just cool weather crop. LP says, yes, it has been a nice chat. Great topic. Okay, so thank you guys for being here and for your participation. I had fun. I'm sure you guys do too. And I learned quite a bit from you guys as well. So stay safe. And I hope to see you again on Friday where we'll be discussing our worm farming Q&A. So stay safe and happy gardening. <laughs>